Okay, can everyone see me now? Am I back? Are we good? Someone speak to me. Or, you know, virtually. It looks good on my end, but it looked good... It looked good, uh... That was weird. There must be something very glitchy in the newest Streamlabs update, because it never told me anything had shut down. It was showing my uptime was fine, it was showing me that my uplink was good, like it never reported any dropped frames, it told me I was still connected, so thank you for alerting me to that. The game also crashed when I first tried to reboot, which I'm sure had something to do with something. Anyway, we were doing, I think, I uh, just done Scales and Caprinus, so we are on Scuttle. And of course, we just can do hound meat for that one. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for your patience. Guys and gals, I don't like to make assumptions about demographics. I did go ahead and update the stream title to part 8, since it's clearly going to be chunked into two episodes. Reporting over to YouTube. Alright. Now we are... Surprise, surprise, back to Rusula. Down to twos. Right? Yeah, we're down to twos. Because it doesn't work with salt rice, so... Rusula and Hackalo makes a potion of water breathing. Awesome. And then we got scales. Any of those twos to start off with. Scales and moon sugar does nothing. We already did, uh, dropped it from two Caprinus, didn't we? Yeah, it's racer plumes, it's a no. Spore pod is a no. All right. Wow, we're about to be done with scales, apparently. Scales and bone meal. There's a potion. I don't know, East Pork. Uh, according to Streamlabs, on my end, nothing ever happened. So, your guess is as good as mine. As to what actually went on just then. I suspect that the update to Streamlabs that pushed today has borked something in their code. And there will be another update coming soon to rectify this this error, whatever it is. All right. Well, hound meat still makes the most sense. Let's go. All right, Rusula, come here. What do we got? I just did hackle low. We were working on the twos. Rusula and Moon Sugar does nothing, but I know that it does work with a pearl for a potion of water breathing, which is nice. On the scales, we're already down to the single ingredients. Works with Grave Dust. Restore Endurance. Neat. And we're back at Scuttle, which will pair with Hound Meat again. Alright, Scuttle and Hound Meat. Here we go. Come on! My failure rate is supposed to only be 37%. I think it's actually been significantly lower than that. We've been getting pretty lucky this session, if I'm really honest about it. Okay, after Scuttle, we circle back to Rusula again. We just did Pearl. Can't do racer plumes. Can do spore pod. After that, it's down to one. 
Boost level track with single ingredients now. Well, going forward. After we make this one. One way or another. Uh, Terra, things are honestly great. That's what I've been saying today. Things are great. I'm really happy. How are you? Let's see. I, I can't remember what it was. Green lichen? Not black lichen. Scales and hackalo do nothing. Scales and hyphophasia do nothing. It was scales and grave dust, I think. Scales and a large egg don't mix. No, they don't mix with moon sugar. Pretty sure they don't go with pearls. No, they don't go with racer plumes. I don't even know why I bothered clicking. That was foolish. Small egg, no. Spore pod, no. All right, we are done with scales. After we burn our last Caprinus on this potion of water walking. Let's do it. <clears throat> Come on now. Come on, meow. That is in spite of the terrible, terrible, terrible air quality in my state. I mentioned this at the very beginning of the stream, but uh, I believe Colorado's been on the news. Denver had like the fifth worst air quality of any city in the entire world earlier this week. It's because we're all just like breathing in insane amounts of smoke that have actually drifted east over the mountains from the wildfires. Like, our state is not, Colorado is not literally on fire, which is a huge improvement over how things were around this time last year, but uh, we're breathing smoke because of other places. All right, let's see. Rusula does nothing with moon sugar, does nothing with racer plumes. Now we're into the singles, right? I think so. Yeah, all right. Black lichen, no. Green lichen, no. Hackalo, yes. Water breathing. Alchemy to 44. Our failure rate is down to 36%. Uh, it hasn't quite been a year. The the fires... The first one may have started around August. I don't remember, but the... The big, horrible season of burning was, like, late October, early November. So, no, it hasn't quite actually been a year. Alright, well, we're done with scales. Which is nice, so we go. Scuttle and hound meat. Alright, now Rusula. Working our way over. We did Hackle Low. So we'll do Hyphophasia. Rusula and Hyphophasia. <sighs> Game, come on. Goodness gracious me. Boy, we are rolling hard into that 36 multiple times in a row. I'm looking at my little Google alert right now, and I'm not sure exactly what this means. Maybe someone in chat does, but outside the building I'm in, the air quality index is currently 115. Does anyone know what that means? In practical terms, how to read the air quality index. 
because I don't. Alright, scuttle and hound meat. That dance continues. Okay. Now we're down to Rusula. And let's try large egg. Nope. Rusula and Pearl. Yep, water breathing. Let's do it. Alright. Next will be... Excuse me. Scuttle and hound meat. One hundred and up is bad. Okay. Unhealthy for sensitive groups. Yeah, so, like, I go outside, and I go for a run, and, like, my eyes kind of sting, and it's a little harder to breathe, but, like, I'm generally okay. I get a little bit of a headache if I'm out there super long, but, like, yeah, if you're, if you're somehow more sensitive to it, which people certainly are, like, you're supposed to stay the fuck inside. Alright, Rusula. Small egg? No. Spore pod. After this, we're actually going to be done with Luminous Rusula. We'll have done everything we can with that ingredient stack, which is fun. Uh, that's not really true, East Fork. I mean, the air is thinner, but your, uh, your body adjusts to it. You know, your, your VO2 max increase increases and your body over indexes on red blood cells so if you live up here for a while uh, you don't really have to worry about it anymore it's not like we're uh, you know, it's not like we're at the top of Mount Everest or anything but technically yes it is technically harder to breathe up here so you know if you train up here at altitude like this and then you head down to sea level to run or do something athletic, I swear, you feel like you have superpowers. It wears off after about a week. Like, the body is loath to waste energy on red blood cells it doesn't need anymore. But for that week, it's like, you can just go... You feel like you can go forever. It's pretty amazing going to sea level after training at altitude. All right, we are done with Rusula now. So, that's it. Scuttle. And how neat. Let's hit scuttle again. It's the only 12 that matters. Now we have two 11s. Let's hit crab meat. They eat coca plants. That's probably like eating a coffee bean or maybe more like eating a guarana berry. Something like that. Like it still has... It's still pharmacologically active, but nowhere near as potent as the shit they eventually refine it into. Is that about right? Okay. Hound meat and scuttle. Here we go. We chew the leaves. Excellent. All right. Ten is the relevant number now. Bungler's Bay. Crab meat, no. Hound meat, no. Scuttle, no. Okay. Next is Salt Rice at six. Yes. Bungler's Bay and Salt Rice. Here we go. Goodness gracious me. Awesome. Let's do crab meat and hound meat. That's an easy one. Let's do scuttle and crab meat. Let's do Bungler's Bane, and probably Salt Rice again, right? Right. Let's do Hound Meat and Scuttle. 
Let's do Bungler's Bane and let's check on Scrib Jelly. That's a no. So it's going to be Salt Rice again. All right. Wow, Karis, that's wild. I've sort of heard of that happening. I didn't know that blood vessels could burst just from altitude. That's news to me. Whenever I play Morrowind, I should probably subtitle the stream. Let's play Morrowind, part such and such. Paren. At least 50% alchemy and chill. That'll only be true until we get it to 100. But still. Alright, crab meat and half meat. Of course. Go scuttle and crab meat, I think. And now we'll go bungler's pain and salt rice again. And then that will start working through the twos. Okay, we got hound meat and scuttle. Or not. You had a blood vessel in your eye pop because someone hit you with a cornhole bag? That's ins that that's crazy. I mean, uh, the I do have a similar story. The um, I I don't know if I've actually talked about it on the stream before, but I got a nicked artery way way up in the back of my nose. I had to have surgery and have the wound electrically cauterized in order to stop the bleeding, because. Uh, the first bit of damage happened when somebody, a drunk girl, accidentally headbutted me in karaoke. But that wasn't, you know, it bled that night, but it stopped after a lot of tissues and some time in the bathroom. And then a few weeks later, and, and it kept bleeding off and on after that, but I, I, I could get it under control. And then I was at work in January of 2019, and I was in the bathroom, and I sneezed, and the fucking thing started bleeding, and it didn't stop. I mean, it did not stop. I bled down to, like, dangerous levels, like I was going to pass out. Like, it was... I, I almost had to get a blood transfusion. They couldn't get the damn thing to stop. And now, you know, they cooked the inside of my nose to cauterize the wound and force the bleeding to stop. And now I can't fucking smell anything. There you go. All right, Bungler's Bane. And... Yeah, we gotta look at the twos now, so... Moon sugar. Yes! Use that moon sugar. Uh-huh. Alright, we got crab meat and hound meat, of course. Um, not quite all. And that's actually, like, the third thing that has really traumatized my nose. So when I was an undergrad, I had somebody open a fume hood that I was still working in prematurely. Got a big whiff of caustic gas. Also in undergrad, I had surgery to fix my deviated septum. And they did like a lot of sawing through my lower turbinate and removing pieces of it. And then there was the nosebleed incident that required. They f First they tried to chemically cauterize it. They went through about a dozen of those silver nitrite things they call pepper sticks before they decided to electrically cauterize it. So between all three of those events, I estimate that I've lost about 80% of my olfactory cells. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. That's just my own ballpark. But what's fascinating about it is it's not a thing of magnitude. Like most things are what I just call out of band. So most things I just can't smell at all. Like I can't smell poop or pee anymore, which is nice. I'm not going to lie. But then, uh, something that is in band, I can still smell at, like, full strength. Like, 
Um, but the other thing, of course, is that for things that are out of band, I have a... Uh, my, uh, you know, the sense of taste is so wedded to the sense of smell that for things that are out of band, my sense of taste is not gone, but it's like probably about 10 to 20 percent as strong as the stuff that's still in band. So for the most part, like <clears throat> at least among the white people I associate with, I tend to win most spicy food eating contests. I actually like really, really, really spicy food, really garlicky food, really salty food, just like very, very aggressive, overwhelming flavors that are too much for a normal person. But I need that level just to taste anything. So that's fun. It's a little bit of my life I don't know if any of you knew about. Let's grab a scuttle and a crab meat. Okay, we're doing crab meat and scuttle this round. If I can find the right place to click. Move the scroll bar, there we go. Okay, five, we're down to five. Let's do Bungler's Bane. It rolled with Moon Sugar last time. Razor Plumes? No. Is that my last two? Not quite. We have Salt Rice again. Hound Meat. Scrib Jelly? No. Alright, next is Hound Meat and Scuttle. Because of course it is. Yeah, I mean, I like my food pretty hot. I don't use. I still you don't usually go for spicy for spicy's sake, except like just every couple of months. Like, I just get the urge to like blow out my palate with really, really aggressively spicy food. So, you know, I'll go to an Indian restaurant and order the hot vindaloo, and I enjoy that on on the occasion. It's not that frequent, but... All right, we got Scrib Jelly. Bungler's Bane, Crab Meat, Hound Meat. Pretty sure it doesn't work with any of these other fours. Scuttle, all right. We got one, two left. Eraser Plumes, all right. Scrib Jelly and Black Lichen. Cure Poison, there you go. All right, where are my other fours? Bungler's Bane. Green lichen, absolutely. Good. Crab meat and hound meat. That's an easy one. Alright, we got scrib jelly. Large egg? No. Moon sugar? No. Salt rice? No. Small egg? No. Alright, wow, we're done with our scrib jelly. That was fast. Scuttle, then. Crab meat. Scuttle and crab meat. We are barreling toward the end of this little session, which is nice. Alchemy to 45! You know what that means. Potion failure rate is down to 35%. Bungler's Bane. Oh yes, and look at this! We can see the third effect now. That's another nice tier of this ability. We can see the third... Unlike Oblivion, you're not gated out of these effects. Like, so the system we've been using, we haven't been missing anything. But look, we can see the third effect of everything now. That's fun. Alright, Bungler's Bane and Large Egg is nothing. Let's do Bungler's Bane and Moon Sugar. Well, spicy Indian food is pretty spicy, but the spiciest food I have ever eaten is spicy Thai food. 
Anybody had spicy Thai food? That is the most heat I have ever had in my mouth. Hound meat and scuttle. Yeah, spicy Mexican food isn't very spicy. Not usually. The, the, I think the hottest thing they ever put in Mexican food is a habanero. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong. Habaneros, habaneros are hot. I'm, I'm not saying they're not hot, but you know what I mean. Bungler's Bane and large egg. No. Bungler's Bane and salt rice. There we go. What's next? Arab triangle meat patty. Yeah, okay, I think you know what, I, I know what you mean. Crab meat, hound meat. Your aunt grew a ghost pepper? That's wild. I have never eaten a ghost pepper. I've never even bitten straight into a habanero. The, uh... I do rather enjoy the sport of watching pepper-eating videos on YouTube. For what that's worth. I've heard spicy Arab food is incredibly hot. I've never had it. So I cannot speak to... I cannot personally speak to its, shall we say, relative power level. All right, let's try and do something with these racer plumes. Don't go with skull. All right, we're not doing anything with the racer plumes. Near and bottom, boys. We got three three brand new alchemy ranks, though. All right, we're down to one. Bungler's Bane. Here we go. All right. Hound meat and large egg. I know that's going to work. small egg. Oh, it's the final potion. How many times do you suppose the game is going to have us fail at the final potion in the session? Only one. If you guessed one, a winner is you. All right, here we go. Yes. Let's go sell this stuff. Oh, that is good. All right, Ariel. Come here, boy. -o. Have these iron bracers. I don't need them. And have some potions. Oh, shoot. I was going to say, I screwed something up. At some point, it stopped incrementing one at a time.
We're getting 18 gold per potion now, if you're wondering. All right, let's offer that. Let's wait the 24 hours for him to restock. Nice. That was fourteen hundred gold. Fifteen hundred. About fifteen hundred gold. Just boom, like nothing. Excellent. Look at that. Forty five hundred gold. We've already bought all the meaningful training we can here in town. I have very little to actually spend money on at this point. Um, let's see. I left my enchanting rings here for later. Which is fine. I'm going to leave this worn imperial key here. We won't need that till much later. I'm going to keep my alchemy stuff with me. Our strength has gotten high enough that I'm not like super terrified about it anymore. And uh, we are kind of the last thing to do at this juncture before we go ahead and set out for the next town is uh, what is je most people's first dungeon. It's like our yeah you know, we didn't we didn't go super wild. It's like our fourth or fifth. But it's the Smuggler Cave of Adam Asartus. We haven't been over here yet. NPCs and Satanine kind of point you over here. It's definitely intended to be the tutorial dungeon. They let you know you're free to practice your skills on evil bandits and what have you. I'm over here because I see that rat. I'm gonna let nibble on me before I go in there. Well, maybe. Just gotta keep, keep on getting all this stuff. My potions are the economic engine that drives the entire island of Vardenfell. Prove me wrong. Get these mushrooms. More bungalow Spain. Uh, the reason East Pork is I am not certain if that has an effect or on the uh, ability to join the Twin Lamps or not. That's my hesitation on killing slaves. Beer to 53, that's exciting. Alright, rat, nibble on me. Unarmored to 22. Armor rating to 3! Yes! Give me that rat meat. Let's go. Alright, so you can see this is like a nifty little nook. Sort of around behind where the road goes. I'm going to harvest these plants. 
slash mushrooms. Not slash mushrooms, plants. Mm. A couple up here as well. Let's get those. Now we'll head back down to Adamasartus, which is over here. We will rest, we will repair, and then we will tackle the dungeon. Tank build now. <gasps> when are you going to fire moth? <laughs> um, well, at minimum after I have a weapon that can hit undead. <laughs> You know, Gurn is such a ridiculous, like, just absurdly powerful tank. Okay, I'm going to do a hard save here. I am not finished, fear not. I am simply taking another little restroom break. I will be right back and we will tackle this dungeon. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do a little sneaking. Like, I'm not gonna save load to do it successfully or anything like that, but hopefully we can get a little bit of increment towards 41. If not, I'm not that worried. I'll pay for training when I have to. Be right back. All right, Adama Sartus. Let's get some, get some Tic Tacs. They're delicious. Let's roll it. Someone tapping about. We can only hope. Oh, how many of you watched the no clip documentary on? Uh, Thief and Looking Glass that they released a little bit ago. Like, like literally yesterday. I have you. All right, Tanisi Varethi. Let's see. Adam Asartus Slave Key. We'll need that. You can't rest here. Enemies are nearby. Well, fine. Uh, it's it's really good. It's really good. Like, um, a lot of the people who came out to get interviewed for the documentary are amazing. Like, they got Ken Levine and Warren Spector. They got Tim Stelmach from Looking Glass itself. They got Terry Brogius, who I've always been super curious about. She's Shodan's voice, you know. And of course, she's just, like, super normal. <laughs> and they got Dan Thrawn, who did the voice of the Eye and a bunch of guard voices. Like, it was just really, really cool to hear from these people and to put faces to the names and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, you'd expect it to be cool, and it was. Hey, look, we are incrementing sneak. 60 out of 100. Here 
we're not in anyone's detection range at the moment. But I feel like that might be changing. Yeah! 74! How do you like that? What happened? Must be a fatigue drain? Maybe? Oh, weakness to common disease. Well, that was an absolute waste. You foolish fellow. Ouch. Ouch. Stupid. Hey, Rockster Rat. Uh, don't be deceived by the part eight. That's uh, for my convenience when I upload things to YouTube because stuff is uh. My streams have been interrupted several times, actually. But uh, I am actually I'm in Adam Sardis right now. It's not the first dungeon I've done on this playthrough. But it's pretty close. It's like the fourth or fifth. I'm only level three. But we're doing the early game endurance grind. Those who know, know, as I say. Oops, wrong, wrong hotkey. Awesome. All right. So that tunnel we can swim into definitely leads somewhere, but Our moon sugar, anything that's super worth selling. Start doing the 10 to 1 rule, I think. We already have an Adam Asardis slave key. Level 3 feels a bit more than a starter. Mm. Oh, I mean, it's, it, it, it's definitely a massive difference. Just the, uh, if nothing else, the extra 10 points of strength and 50 pounds of carry weight is huge. So is the extra, I think, dozen health at this point, something like that. Makes a big difference. Steel Wakazashi. Alright, we got gold. Moon sugar. More ingredients. Those are generally my favorite things to find. Somebody is smuggling pillows. Ah, yes, the old gate with the level 10 lock. Security to 14! Oh, we're fucking Basso the box man now. Alright, let's go free the slaves before I do anything else. Uh, no, Rox, I'm not playing with mods right now. You know, I have... I've never gotten very far in Daggerfall. I... I couldn't handle the procedural generation and the proclivity to get stuck in dungeons because of it. But I hear Daggerfall Unity fixes a lot of that, so I'll probably try Unity someday if it does fix those issues. Excellent. Hello, slaves. Badargo. Do you have the key to these bracers? Will you let me go free? You have the key. Will you let me go free? Unlock the slave's bracers. Yes, Badargo is free. You are a good friend of Badargo. Oh, call! Do you have the key to these bracers? Will you let me go free? You have the key. Will you let me go free? Unlock the slave's bracers. Yes, now I am free. Thank you, Travis. Oh. There it is! We freed enough slaves to get the topic. You freed me, Travis. Are you in the Twin Lamps? Twin Lamps. I do not know if they really exist. It is said they help slaves like us escape. Until you arrived, I did not believe I would ever see Argonia again. So we have to free, like, 20 slaves before we can actually do anything. 
And I think to get the topic, it's like six or seven, something like that. One day to you, friend. Banals. Do you have the key to these bracers? Will you let me go free? Twin lamps. I don't trust you enough to talk about that. You have the key. Will you let me go free? Unlock the slave's bracers. Yes, now I am free. Thank you, Travis. Twin lamps. Okay, that's the same. Twin lamps. But our gold knows only rumors. They help slaves escape. They take us back to elsewhere. Well, I mean, big ups to them, say I. Alright, I got four hammers left. That should definitely be enough to finish out this dungeon. So we need to we need to go swimming, first of all. There's a iron saber. Skeleton with some bone meal, a basket, and a fishing pole. And the other sort of feature in this room. See if you can find your way to it properly. This rusted chest. Talvani bug musk and a little gold. Alright, not bad. Let's head back here now. Get my spear back on before I forget and do something I regret. So once we finish out of Masartus, I'm going to make the trip along the road to the next town, which is uh, en route to Balmora. It's uh, Pelagiad, which I, I now believe to be the correct pronunciation based on learning how to pronounce Pelagius from playing Skyrim. Alright, rat, come here. Oh, rock straight, yeah. Uh... I don't know if you go. I don't know if you have uh, spent any time on uh, game FAQs. If you ever go over there, but I'm. I wrote the. I wrote the highest-rated Morrowind guide on game FAQs, <sighs> like because I thought I thought that the existing guides for the game sucked because they were just lists of quests that told you how to complete the quests, which is not what anyone needs. Like, the quests are not hard. <laughs> Solving them isn't hard. Listing quests is dumb. What people need help with is finding all of the awesome little stuff that's in the game, so I wrote a guide that essentially revolved around seeing as much of the island as you possibly could in a given playthrough. Alright, Spear to 54. And also discussed, you know, the, the game mechanics around how to build a character and what have you, because that was uh, also lacking. I don't know if I I don't know if I would call myself the Morrowind master, but I am uh, very very familiar with Morrowind. Let's get this gold. Netch leather left pauldron. Let's get these ingredients. And don't miss the thief ring hiding right here. Fortify agility, speed, and personality. Five points for 30 seconds on use. I'm trying not to use enchanted items yet because using enchant to raise intelligence is part of my leveling plan, but. We definitely want to get all of these items. There's a Netch Leather right pauldron under there. I want the torch. I 
ignoring that, just taking the ingredients. Yeah, I'm trying to get to that level on um, Oblivion. <laughs> Eastport. I don't know if I have it in me to actually write another guide of that magnitude. As writing the Morrowind guide was one hell of an endeavor. I'm glad I did it. That guide needed to exist. But... And I do think one for Oblivion needs to exist too, but I don't know. <laughs> it's a it is an endeavor to write a guide like that. That's the way I'd I'd put it. Alrighty. Let's head back here, do a little more alchemy. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. A little more alchemy. All the ingredients we found. <laughs> Morrowind is delightfully cozy. That's a great way to describe it. Uh, especially when you're as committed to your alchemy grind as I am. You guys ready? It's here. It's back. We're doing it again. Oh no, not again. Yes, again. Once more with feeling. Do better. Alright. Caprinus and Rusla. We're going to do that for a while. And by a while, I think I mean five potions. So that's 25, 30, no, nine more potions. We gotta get it down to 16. Before anything else is a contender. I mean, Daggerfall is huge. It's the size of continental Great Britain, I've heard. Continental, it's the size of Great Britain. <laughs> but you know it, it it's it's a little deceptive because so much of it relies on procedural generation right like it, I, I, I I would be significantly more impressed if something that massive were handcrafted like a Morrowind or an Oblivion or a Skyrim is but the size itself is pretty cool not gonna lie I'd like to get through Daggerfall sometime. It has the distinction of being the only mainline Elder Scrolls game, which means, you know, one of the ones with a number, that I have not finished at least once. I actually have played Arena all the way through, but I have never played Daggerfall through. I've never finished it. I also have not played Red Guard or Battle Spire or any of the silly cell phone games. And I just don't really dig on multiplayer, so I've never done much with Elder Scrolls Online either. Well, a dense, a really densely packed map that's full of stuff can feel way, way bigger than a huge map that's mostly just open space, right? That's why, you know, 
from what I understand, Dark Souls is not really a very big game. You know, by 2011 game standards or whenever it is was it was released. But there's just so much stuff packed into the space and the way it like loops back in on itself kind of a little bit metroidvania style as you open shortcuts and what have you makes it feel way way bigger than it actually is I think that's true Rockstar Rat. It takes a little longer than an hour or two if you factor in the cliff racers in Morrowind, but yes. Assuming you can run unmolested, those times sound about right to me. I'm also, um, I have to say too, the other reason that I have trouble getting into Daggerfall is I really dislike, uh, the timed quest aspect. I don't mind a timed quest every now and then when it makes when it makes a lot of sense for the storyline or the plotline they're trying to tell. Like, uh, you know, I actually love the time limit on, say, the prologue to Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I don't mind the timed quest to cure the poison in Baldur's Gate, but Daggerfall, like, every single quest has a time limit just because. I find that incredibly annoying. Alright. This is the last one before I at least try something else. Yeah, does Daggerfall Unity fix the quests? I've heard Daggerfall Unity fixes a lot of my gripes with it. And one thing that really did impress me, like, the, the, the last time I touched Daggerfall was like a decade ago. It was back when I was in law school. And uh, the thing that impresses me to this date is how insanely robust the uh, character customization options are. I thought it was really cool how in da what one thing that Daggerfall has in its character creation, for those of you who have never played it, is you can take a lot of extra benefits to your character, like at the outset at creation, to really power yourself up, but the more benefits you take, the slower you gain levels. Until, you know, if you like the maximum number if you if you take the maximum number of benefits i think you gain experience or not because daggerfall was also the game that introduced the skill system but you gain skill experience at like one sixth the ordinary rate one fifth maybe something like that um but the uh but you could also take weaknesses and you know if you took weaknesses they had the opposite effect they sped your leveling back up so you could actually like try to take a balance of strengths and weaknesses to keep either like keep your experience gain nice and right in the mean or if you're feeling bold you could take a few weaknesses just to gain experience a lot faster well yeah no i'm not saying they never make sense east pork i'm saying that you know i i think there needs to be a reason like the prologue of Human Revolution is one of my favorite examples of a time limit I really like. Like, everybody is telling you there's a hostage situation. If you fuck around Seraph Industries too long, the hostages get killed. That makes sense. But, you know, Daggerfall in particular, every quest has a time limit. And it can be as simple as get the thing out of the dungeon. Doesn't matter. You wait too long, you fail the quest. And 
you add that to the fact that all of the non-story dungeons in Daggerfall are procedurally generated, which means that many of them can be literally unsolvable. And even if they're not literally unsolvable, they are just unbelievably weird and confusing and terrible to try and navigate in. Like, Daggerfall on release did a lot of cool things, but it was really, like, impossible to play. But, like, like we keep saying, you know, Daggerfall Unity is the big thing now, and I hear that it has fixed a lot of those issues. I always wanted to finish Daggerfall. It's very important to the lore of the series as a whole, and... If there's a less painful way to do it, I'm here for it. I'm sure we'll get around to that eventually. Like so many other things. Alright, now I have a dozen moon sugars. What else do I have a dozen of? Slaughterfish scales, that's a no. Coprinus, that's a no. What's next? I think it's spore pods. I have six of those. That's a no. And then it's Bungler's Bane. I have five of those. Nice. Here we go. Do it! The Warp of the West seems like the least cool thing? I think the Warp in the West is very cool. It's like dragon breaks are a thing. The orcs, because you know, in Arena and Daggerfall, orcs are just monsters that you fight like you would expect in most games the warp in the west is like the moment that the orcs like sort of retroactively advanced to the level of real sentience and like whatever happened in the warp was so significant that suddenly the orcs had this whole history and culture of their people that they literally didn't have before. Like, I don't know, I think that world breaking stuff and the idea of Chim in general and the whole, the way the series just plays with what its godhead is and the fact that reality is actually just a dream of the godhead and makes it, makes things like, uh, the player's ability to save and load and access the console are actually in-universe canon because of all that. I, I, I think that's absolutely one of the coolest things about the series, so. But that's me. Of course, others are free to disagree. Alchemy to 46! The failure rate is down to 34. You love to see it. You really do. I mean, it depends on what compels you. You know, in Daggerfall, you don't... As when you're playing Daggerfall, you don't experience the creation of the warp. You pick one of seven endings. The warp was written by Kirkbride later on. To pick which ending was canon going into Morrowind. And the answer was none of them and all of them at once. I didn't mean to do moon sugar. I meant to do the scale. There we go.
We're at 10. Let's grab Rusula. Doesn't go with moon sugar. I know it doesn't go with scales. It's gonna go with Coprinus. All right, moon sugar. What do we got? I know you don't go with scales either. You don't go with any of the high ones. You don't go with scales or Coprinus or Rusula. I think we were working on Bungler's Bane, weren't we? Yeah, do you go with Scrib Jelly? No. Alright, so let's do the threes. And Pool Pod, that's a no. I know you do go with Bungler's Bane. That's a good one. Okay, let's see. What now? 9, 9, 10. So scales. And Coprinus. Still. Excellent. We got nines now. Rusula, I know, does not go with moon sugar. Or scales. We can put it with Coprinus. Now I have nine moon sugar. We were doing the threes. Do I have any other threes? Salt rice. That does nothing. Okay, let's do twos. Ashiam. That doesn't go with anything. We'll do another bungler's bane. This Friday is Friday the 13th. Uh-oh. You're right, it is. Well, Halloween 1 is the very best slasher movie that was ever made. Ever. So I'm with you there. And I don't love Friday the 13th. I do like, uh... I really like Nightmare on Elm Street. If you haven't seen any of those. The, I, 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 will, I will say those are also good. Although they are not as good as Halloween. Well, the original Halloween is... Easily... The best slasher movie of all time. I personally don't think it's even close. There we go. Alright, now what? Rusula again? Yes. Eight. And then you don't go with sugar or scales. But you do go with spore pod. Or moon sugar. We were doing twos last time. You do hyphophasia? You can! Nice. Alright, scales. Can't do any of the sevens. Where are my fives at? No spore pod, but yes, Coprinus. That's perfect. Honestly. You didn't like Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh. I thought the device was terrifying, first of all. Or the notion that falling asleep is what gets you killed. And I thought Freddy's knife hand was also pretty terrifying. But you don't have to like it, obviously. I just did. Those are my reasons. Alright, we got five. Spore pod. Where it's at. Alright, Moon Sugar. We were working through the twos. Racer plumes are a no. How about rat meat? No. Okay, let's do the ones. Bone meal, no. Bread, no. Bungler's Bane, there you go. Scales. We're on the fours now. Scrib jelly's a no. Spore pods a no. Let's do another Violet Coprinus. Perfect. Okay, what 
are we on now? Six. That's a Rusula. No on sugar, no on scales. Which means I need the fours. Scrib jelly is a no. I'm gonna go with spore pod. Perfect. Moon sugar. We did Bungler's Bane. It's ready for the ones. Coda flower, no. Heather, no. Hyphophasia, yes. I remember that one works. Okay. Scales are at six. I know it, so now we're doing threes. Ample pod. Yes! Nice. Okay, we have five Rusula. I know it doesn't go with sugar, it doesn't go with scales, it doesn't go with scrib jelly. Does it go with salt rice? No. Spore pod? Yes, it does. Nothing will beat PT or Silent Hill 2. It's going to be very, very difficult to ever make anything scarier than PT. I don't think it's impossible. I think it can be done. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, moon sugar. We did hyphophasia. What about a crush fiber? That's a no. Large egg? No. Marshmallow? No. Muck? No. Wickwheat? Nope. Alright, that's it. Can't do anything else with my moon sugar. Let's grab a scale. Threes. That would be Coprinus, of course. Oh yeah, salt rice? No. There you go. Alright, we're doing scales and coprinus again. Uh, Silent Hill 2... I mean, Silent Hill 2 is a real interesting beast. I mean, Silent Hill 2 was never that scary in its moment-to-moment, -moment, like, period. It was... You know, all the slow reveal of the real story behind it that was really the horror engine in that game. Jerusalem can't do anything with salt rice. Which means it's ready for the twos. Ample pod, no. HGM, no. Razor plumes, no. Rat meat, no. Spore pod it is. So we're holding on to our sugar. Scales are up. I don't think I have any other threes. Besides Rusula and Salt Rice. Let's do twos. A Gamble Pod. Now let's do Scrib Jelly. Again. Doesn't work with any of the remaining threes, I don't think. Check salt rice just to be sure. Now let's do twos. Ashyam, no. Acer plumes, no. Rat meat, yes. Scrib jelly and rat meat, that's a potion. Okay, we're back on Rusula again. I was going to say, I don't think it goes with salt rice. Didn't go with scales. Didn't go with scrib jelly. Let's do twos. Ashyam, no. Racer plumes, no. Tell you what it does go with. Like at the very beginning. 
Silent Coprinus. Enough Skuma for Kajiti. Oh yeah, no, the ambiance was terrifying. I guess that's what I mean when I say the the moment to moment wasn't like pulse pounding, it was just like utter creeping dread, so to speak. Alright, salt rice. And you don't go with scales and you don't go with scrib jelly. Right? Do you go with Ashiam? No. Mother two's at. Ursula, no. Racer plumes, no. Alright, ampoule pod, no. Bread, bone meal, no. Bread, yes. Salt rice and bread. That's my next potion. <laughs> if only Silent Hill 5 would have come out. You know, I didn't hate Homecoming. I, I enjoyed Homecoming. I enjoyed Origins. And I actually, I liked Downpour. Like, they weren't nearly as good. But... I don't think they were terrible either. I really, I, I actually really liked the, like, really out there one, uh, Shattered Memories on the Wii. I really enjoyed that game. Right, we got scales. I know you don't pair with Scrib Jelly. You don't pair with Ashiam. You don't pair with Rusula. You don't pair with Racer Plumes. You don't pair with Salt Rice. Ample Pod. There we go. Scales and Ample Pod. Yeah, you know, uh, 3 is very, very well loved by the community. Granted, I've only played it once, but I did not enjoy 3 very much. And I have pretty specific reasons for it. The big, besides the gameplay itself, like, the puzzles were interesting. I, I, I liked the riddles, I liked the difficulty. The combat was, you know, essentially the same as the first two games, so I didn't really mind that either. It did get frustrating on hard mode, but I also managed my resources very poorly on that very first playthrough. The thing I didn't like about 3 was that it took all the, the first two games that were both really, really ambiguous about what was actually going on. Like, because, you know, the first game had that whole through line about the locals feeding hallucinogenic drugs to the tourists who came to town. And so you could never be certain that wasn't what was happening to Harry. And the different endings of two like leaned into that idea that, oh, it could have been any one of these things. It could just be a fever dream that he had in the hospital after his car crash. You don't know. And two, of course, like, it's impossible to tell what was real and what wasn't, and that was the point. Like, you meet all these different characters and all of them see something completely different as they're moving through the town of Silent Hill, which I thought was brilliant. Laura, the little girl, doesn't see any monsters at all. And then, uh, what I hated about three, above all else, was that it went and committed the whole series to that stupid cult being real. And the cult was like the least interesting thing from any of the games, as far as I was concerned. And they went back and canonized that the cult was real. And 3 was the game that did that, and I hated it for doing that. I always have, and I probably always will. I think it robbed the series of one of its greatest storytelling strengths as soon as they made that move. Alright. Let's do the singles. Ashian, Coda Flower, Heather... Crash Fiber, Large Egg, Marshmallow, Muck. We're 
We're nearing the end of this one. Makes me happy. Use a razor plume on something. Hot damn, potion of levitate. Alchemy to forty seven. Our potion failure rate is down to thirty three. It is efficient. We officially only fail one out of three potions. Does that excite you as much as it does me? I doubt it. But maybe. He says and then promptly fails a basic restore fatigue potion. Such is life, I suppose. We're doing large egg and salt rice for this one. Very nice. Alright, let's see about these scales. Alright. Ashy, no. Heather, yes. Perfect. Scrib jelly. Anything at all. Ashy M, no. Crest fiber, no. Rusula, no. Marker, no. Face of blue, no. Salt rice, no. Scales, no. Spore pod, no. Coprinus, no. Wick wheat, yes. Alright, scrib jelly and wick wheat. That's our next potion. Todd is watching. <laughs> Whatever do you mean by that, Karis? There we go. <clears throat> All right. Ashyam. Fresh fiber. No. Ursula. No. Marshmallow. No. Razor plume. No. Salt rice. No. Scales. No. Scrip jelly. No. Spore pod, yes. Ashyam and spore pod, go figure. go. Alright. Crash fiber. Rusula, no. Marshmallow, no. Acer plume, no. Salt rice, no. Scales, no. Scrib jelly, no. Coprinus, no. Alright, we're holding on to the crash fiber. Rusula, marshmallow. Yes. Awesome. Plumes. Salt rice, no. Scales, no. Jelly, no. Primus, no. Alright. Salt rice. Scales, no. Jelly, no. Coprinus, no. Scales. Jelly, no. Coprinus, yes. I think that leaves Scrib Jelly. Which means we're finished. Let's go back to a reel. Sell some stuff off. Oh yes, absolutely, Rockstarat. You'll have to get rid of that moon sugar if you want any services from me. I don't want any trouble. Fine. It's gone! 
Oh, Morrowind logic. I love you so much. Alright, let's sell the potions we made and the stuff that we found and took from Adam Asartus. Uh, yeah, well, Rockstarat, I, I always play on max difficulty, among other things, and so the only way to deal with the level scaling in Oblivion, at least in the low levels, if you're playing on maximum difficulty, is through Alchemy. Like, it's not even, it's not even optional. Alchemy is functionally a mandatory skill. <laughs> All right. Have all that. I'll take my sugar back. Okay. Now let's go back to Fargoth's house because it's no longer going to be home base. We're going to pick up everything that we were holding on to in there. And we're going to schlep it over to the next town. Except redundant keys I actually don't need anymore, like the Adam Asartus slave key. On the other hand, the worn Imperial key I will be able to use later on. Alright guys, it is a little after six my time. I have been streaming for about three hours, I think. Frankly, I'm getting a little hungry. So, I'm going to leave off right here basically I think this is as far as we got along the main road heading out of Sedanine yeah, right here where it curves up through the hills and leaves the bitter coast this is where we're going to leave it so uh, that's gonna do it for me today for parts 7 and 8 <laughs> thanks to the outage of Let's Play Morrowind. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, I hope that you will give the channel a follow. If you're watching later on on YouTube, please uh, like the video and sub to the channel if that interests you. Whether you're on Twitch or YouTube, there is a link to my Discord server uh, below either the channel or in the video description. The Discord is the best place to discuss this or any of my other content. And if you're watching on YouTube, of course, I would like it very much if you would consider becoming a Patreon supporter of the channel. Uh, regardless of whether you do any of that, thank you very, very, very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Today, we are going to raid over to... Let's see, who's live? Let's let's go visit my buddy Zippy. So we're raiding over to Zippy. Um, he's a really, really awesome streamer. He's playing XCOM 2. He tends to play a lot of games like that that are super heavy on their mechanics focus. Uh, he's pretty meticulous the way he plays, but he's a lot of fun to watch. He's a lot of fun to chat with. He's super interactive. He's super friendly. He's really chill. And he's a big supporter of this channel and so I in turn am a big supporter of his and I hope that you all will join me in the raid say hello to Zippy give him a follow watch a little XCOM it's always a good time and I think I'm going to be back tomorrow and we will be playing some Thief Gold until then thanks again for watching see you at Zippy's see you tomorrow take care bye bye